We all want someone to love. I am whatever he wants me to be. But you've never seen love like this before. I love giving orgasms. I love getting them. Provocative. They happen to be first cousins. I'm a full-time baby girl. Eye-opening. Washing is just pure fun. <laughs> There's never a bad foursome. Outrageous. Ugh. It's hot. I like it. We really enjoy clown sex. Proving there's always someone for everyone. I share my home with 12 dolls. Or something. Once you drink the Kool-Aid, you never go back. Who wouldn't like to live their king 24-7? This is Extreme Love. Tonight, love comes in all shapes and sizes. What I love most about Amelia is that she loves me just as much as I love her. That's so cheap. There you go. Yeah. But when these long-distance lovers finally move in together, can they handle the close quarters? Oh, how long is it until she goes home again? And a disapproving family. He was more judgmental towards larger people. And meet the married couple who love each other so much, it hurts and gives a new meaning to ball and chain. It's a beautiful thing. But when they try out a new love slave to the mix... On your knees. Will she pass the audition? Prepare to receive. And later, meet the plastic surgeon who keeps putting his wife under the knife. He says, would you be interested in a Wonder Woman makeover? But as he strives to make his perfect woman, will their relationship also need a makeover? For richer or poor, till death do us part, yes. <laughs> but not fat. But first, in Kissimmee, Florida, meet ex-army officer Eric. <laughs> also known as Tank, and his wife, hairstylist Daniela. Oh, no. Stack it up. Whose nickname is Els. They are the model of domestic suburban life. Who doesn't want a white picket fence? This, this is the American dream. But not every white picket fence comes with a matching dungeon. <laughs> I love impact play which is uh, impacting the body, spanking, flogging, whips, all of those ways to create uh, sensation through impact. After being with him and learning, you know, the science behind it and living the lifestyle, it's not about pain, it's about sensation. I am his whatever he wants me to be. <laughs> BDSM is pretty much a creative way to play with each other. Tank and Elle started playing together from the moment they met. I used to work at a store called Fetish Factory as a sales associate, and once a month they throw a party. And he used to come in with all these women looking badass, and I wasn't really into the lifestyle. But then watching him play with the girls, I used to be like, ooh, I want to try that. I fell in love with her that night. And after our first date, I just never left. <laughs> like, that was it. <laughs> Nine months after that, we eloped to Las Vegas, and our life has been the best it's ever been. And they've now been happily married for over five years, during which time Tank has been sharing his expert BDSM technique. When I was younger, I worked really hard at doing what I thought a good lover would do. And so I saw nine and a half weeks. <laughs> and I really thought the food scene was awesome because the sex was playful and uh, it was erotic and it was hot. So I didn't know there was BDSM at the time. Since then, I slowly learned more and more. And there I am 35 years later. It took that long to learn enough to teach it. Els, who's 20 years younger, never felt the crack of a whip until they met. Wow, that is really good. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up a, a very shy kid where I had chronic stuttering and I was never in front of crowds talking to anybody. I was in the background. And with this lifestyle, because of transforming yourself and the leather or the latex, the mask, it allowed me to free myself. It has totally you know, empowered me. And with Tank's guidance, 
Els is embracing the inner submissive and dominant sides of her personality. He's shown me that I crave to be submissive, but I am dominant. I'm not submissive to everybody else. I'm just his submissive. It's not just about who's on top. I am a straight male. I'm bisexual. Uh, me personally, this is my sex life. Any need or any desire that I have sexually, she fulfills for me. He's not really searching for more girls to f But Elle's, on the other hand, she wants something more. Before I married him, I was in a lesbian relationship for almost three years. And I guess from comments here and there, he really started to realize that I was missing that girl connection. I didn't want to take away half of her life. No matter what I do as a male, I will never be able to share that kind of female energy with her. Thank you, Danny. You're welcome. <laughs> so now, they're on the lookout for a new addition to their relationship. We started looking for a submissive to be part of our family. They've had several romps with female submissives before. And while Tank doesn't have sexual intercourse with any of these women, he still gets a kick out of these threesomes. It's more of an intimate exchange of sexual energies without any um, intercourse or traditional oral or... Um... <laughs> The duo has placed ads looking for a female playmate to join them, and now it's a matter of who will be brave enough to answer their call. We just want somebody that can just complement what we already have going on, or even enhance what's going on. But this couple knows only too well that finding the perfect sub can be a painful process. These girls want to get a little more of tank that I'm willing to share. Girls get greedy. Meanwhile, in the UK, there's someone else who's been looking for a playmate and a soulmate. That's 25-year-old Amelie, a plus-sized gal originally from Denmark. As long as I can remember, I've been fat. And of course, that comes with a lot of bullying. Like, classmates would pick on me as, oh, that's the fat one. It affected me really badly. I gained a lot of weight again because I developed an eating disorder, binge eating. Um, so I gained even more weight, which meant I was picked on even more. I started self-harming and I just had a really horrible self-image. Uh, I hated looking in the mirror. I hated picking out clothes because nothing would fit me. I wanted to be thin so badly. I remember not being very old. I cried in my bed and I wished that I could find the zipper to take off the fat suit I thought I was wearing. But that was before her life changed and her love of online gaming led to meeting her perfect player. Oh, look how cute we are. <laughs> Sean and I, we met 11 years ago on a game on the PlayStation. And the thing about like online relationships, you get to know a person in a different way. Uh, of course, we had seen pictures of each other. You could see how fat I was in the pictures, but he didn't care, he just wanted to talk to me. I wouldn't say I'm generally attracted to larger women. I'm attracted to people that I love, really. Yeah. So it just happened, yeah. It's never been like a fat fetish thing. I mean, maybe in my head before we met, it wouldn't have been someone as large, mm. but it just happened to be, and yeah. I didn't think anyone would like me, yeah. a bit old me. What I love most about Amelia is that she loves me back just as much as I love her. That's so cheesy. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It's the combination of everything that makes her Amelia that, that I love. I don't think there's one thing I could single out. Not my beautiful eyes, not my feet. Not, not your my feet. Ears. You have not really nice ears. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And it was Sean's love that helped her finally come to terms with her body. I haven't had luck with boyfriends before. And finally there's this guy 500 miles away who fancies me as much as I fancy him. And then we started long distance relationship. And then, yeah, we got married two years ago. Oh, we sang our vows. Was it me that put the ring on the wrong finger? I gave you the wrong hand, yes. Yeah, you gave me the wrong hand. And you just went with it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it wouldn't come off. No. 
On your wedding day, I think you look perfect, as you ever do. I love this picture. But despite having been married for two years, Amélie's work kept her in Denmark while Sean finished studying in the UK. And she's just started living with him full time. I moved to England like three weeks ago now. Yeah, it's 20th, yeah. We were long distance. Those time distances were really hard, going like almost a year without seeing the person you love, without like just touching, holding hands, like it's horrible. Yeah. I think if it went any longer, it wouldn't have worked out. But are the pressures of moving to a new country and living under the same roof getting to be too much for Amélie? I'm really close to my family. I'm really close to my mum and my grandma. So that was a hard transition. And can she cope with Sean's constant exposure to her daily challenges? Do you remember a time where we were walking down a high street and a group of teenage girls walk past us and they say out loud, why is he with her? And that really got me, it really upset me. It's not just strangers who react negatively. My dad, we've kind of cut contact a bit more with. He was more judgmental towards larger people. There's the expectation that a thin person is with another thin person, or maybe I should be with a fat man because I'm fat myself. Will love conquer all, so they can properly settle in the UK as a married couple? Sean doesn't seem so sure. It's kind of strange, because we're so used to being together for long periods of time, but there being a set end date, so in my head, oh, how long is it until she goes home again? So I think, I think it'll, take, it'll take more getting used to. In West Hollywood, Los Angeles, husband and wife, Veronica and David, are obsessed with appearances. Yeah, how about a protein shake? Yeah, okay, fine, I'll do that. But when they first met, David's opening line was anything but flattering. He says, would you be interested in a Wonder Woman makeover? That's because David is a leading plastic surgeon and saw lots of potential in her. I'm like, what's that? He's like, lipo of the chin and the arms and the thighs and da 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 da. You know, uh, so, Brazilian butt. Yeah, she yeah. opted for everything I suggested. Yeah. Even marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica first met David when she went to see him for vaginoplasty following the birth of her daughter. It was just the beginning of her transformation. I had the laser vaginal rejuvenation, liposuction of multiple areas, Brazilian butt augmentation. You are trying to mold me into... Yeah, I guess so. Maybe so. Your future wife. Subconsciously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things moved quickly. The couple got married 10 months after that meeting. I mean, I'm still amazed that he says that it was love at first sight because I was heavier, I yeah. was chunky. Well, I didn't think that. I, you know, I tell you and that you're now. So I really didn't think. You're so critical. You're so critical. How could yeah, you even give me two? I guess I was in love real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica appreciates her husband's unique skill set. So I call my husband the vagina man because he makes the vagina look prettier. And I'm very proud of what he does, you know? I feel like I'm a lucky woman, you know, to have a man who's so worried about women. Okay, push through your glute. It can enhance sexual gratification as well. I said, uh, you know, how, how, how tight do you want to be? You know, I'm going to be like 16. I said, that's what most women want, you know? <laughs> it's not just Veronica who strives for the perfect body. David has taken extreme measures to make his pecs look their perkiest best. I can sculpt her out the biceps, the triceps, take the fat under ultrasonic guidance and inject it into the muscle. Okay, I say, hey, I have it. Look at this, feel this, it's nice, it's natural. Proud of their new sculpted bodies, the couple has even taken things to a competitive level. This, this is LA. It's all about youth, beauty, looking good. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. But not everyone feels the same about this extreme approach to looking good, 
One naysayer is Veronica's daughter, nine-year-old Isabella. I would never really want to get surgery because it's not really you. Like, I want to be myself. But can her parents ever accept the bodies they were given? Or will the pressure to be perfect ultimately unravel their marriage? Back in Florida, Tank keeps his marriage from unraveling by tying up his wife. Shackles. And worshipping her with a good old-fashioned spanking. Any desire that I have sexually, she fulfills for me. And now, these two are looking to have someone new join in their fun. And are on the hunt for a live-in female submissive to complete their BDSM family. The submissive that we're looking for will be mostly for her. Tank has no problem sharing his wife with another woman, if that's what it takes to keep her happy. He will never be able to touch me like a female. He will never be able to have that girl talk that, you know, I'm looking to have. So pretty much I win all over again. <laughs> the sub will be required to serve them both on demand 24-7. This is our living space. This is like where all the naughty, naughty things happen. <laughs> and then, dun, dun, dun. When um, our submissive has been behaving well. You get to sleep in the cage, and that is huge. So far, their casual flings with other female subs haven't worked out. This man is wonderful. And these girls want to get a little more of tank that I'm willing to share. Girls get greedy, so. <laughs> Having posted the ad for their new live-in submissive, the couple also hunts for recruits right in the middle of town. And looking the part is essential for attracting someone curious. Putting wigs on, makeup, transforming my look, Seeing that there's other sides of me that can come out and play with no judgments, I've totally allowed myself to just be free. It's awesome. But what will the locals say when they come face to face with their extreme alter egos? Get into it. Have any questions? We're here for you. Absolutely. Thank so, you. Carnival Thank you. Uh, not long. Uh, you're into it. I'm into it. Let me give you our card before we step away. Oh, for real? You can take a picture with us if you like. Yeah, I like it. All the energy that people throw at us, we love it. <laughs> we do. <laughs> love it. <laughs> the neighbors seem surprisingly open. What do you do with those? Turn around and I'll show you. Before you actually get to her, swing. Though they haven't found a sub on the streets, they're encouraged with the online responses. On social media, you can put out exactly what you're looking for. You know, here's my current lifestyle. Are you interested in trying out this kind of lifestyle? And while a lot of people have shown interest, only one person seems to check all their boxes. They know what BDSM and kink are, but their real-time participation is practically nil. They've picked an unproven newbie and invited her over for an audition. In West Hollywood, Los Angeles, wife Veronica has undergone many body perfecting operations. I had the laser vaginal rejuvenation, liposuction, Brazilian butt augmentation. All at the hands of her husband, David, a successful plastic surgeon. I feel like I'm a walking advertisement for him. Right. Good morning, girls. How are you doing? Today, the couple are both getting Botox injections at the practice where David works. You're going to feel a little bit of a pinch, OK? Good Lord Almighty. I'm gonna get a good amount right there. Textbook perfect Botox, okay? All right. Veronica is determined to maintain David's vision of the perfect Hollywood wife. Well, after I had the Wonder Woman makeover, I think total um, time that I was in surgery was like eight hours. 
so I didn't want all that to be for nothing. We're going to have a wheat bun. And now, David helps her stick to a strict diet, too. A lot of my business is fat, doing liposuction all the time, but I, I don't like fat, you know? So I mean, I tell people I watch my weight and I watch my wife's weight, too. <laughs> How thoughtful, David. Even if I gain, like, six, seven pounds, he'll be like, how much do you weigh? Yeah. I don't really let what he says bother me. I know that David loves me for who I am because when I walked into his office, he said that when he saw me, it was love at first sight. For richer or poor, till death do us part, yes. <laughs> but not fat or skinny. <laughs> yeah. There's a fat clause there. Back in Kissimmee, it's role playing that's a turn on for this couple. Video's time is about being creative on how to manipulate the body to make it feel amazing. And while Tank is the dom in their relationship... You stay on your knees, I know how much it hurts. <laughs> That's what you get from marrying a sadist. Els is searching for a submissive female to lure into their dungeon. All right. And they found someone who just might fit the bill. We have somebody coming over today who is going to be interviewing. Trying out. Trying out to be one of our submissives. They've had subs before, but now they're looking for one to move in full time. A new submissive is actually something that we really, we really want to have. We're totally excited to, 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 test to find the next victim. Meet 25-year-old Ray. I think what attracts me about being in a position as submissive is I genuinely like to please people and I think I would really be excited to be in a relationship where that basically gets to be my full-time job. <laughs> I will be using these today. I definitely hope that I have what it takes to become their sub. I know that they are hard to please. I know that they know exactly what they want. Pheromones rule the world, and if that person can't interact with her on an intimate level, then there it just won't be a match. Is this the start of a beautiful BDSM relationship? We shall see. What she we shall see. Hello, beautiful. Welcome, Welcome to in. our home. We're excited to have you I'm excited. Today. To be here. Yes, don't be too yeah. excited. I know, I'm a little nervous too, <laughs> but that's, that's all the fun in it, right? That's good. Let's see how those knees are doing. Ooh, good job. <laughs> what we're going to do today is going through some of the skill sets how well you can learn, how well you can execute, how much discipline you have. Any questions for us? Is it going to hurt? It's going to hurt so good. It's going to hurt so good, so good. But first things first, a good submissive has to dress the part. So I want to see this one with your heels. What do you say? Yes, goddess. You're going to have to work on your answering goddess on time. Yes, goddess. Yeah. You want her to feel beautiful and look beautiful because that's sensory is a very huge part of BDSM and kink. I think Els is a little displeased that I keep forgetting to call her goddess. Um, so I think I'm definitely gonna be punished for that one a little bit later. I'm almost naked and I'm a little sweaty, so a little nervous going in. Um, excited to see what they ask for me. Hopefully I can show them that I have what it takes to be their submissive and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do. But with pros like Els and Tank in charge, will Ray make the grade or prove a little sub-standard? Back in the UK, Amelie and Sean are living together for the first time, even though they've been married for two years. You want to go out for dinner tonight? Are you paying? Then yes. <laughs> with Sean now finally by her side, Amelie is learning to love herself. But growing up, it was a different story. When I was growing up, I always loved reading books, but there was never people in my, like, with my size, with my, like, just fat on their bodies. They were described as thin, and if they were fat, fat they were always portrayed in a comical way. Or they were evil, like the Little Mermaid, uh, Ursula, the, the villain, she's fat. 
I can't be the hero. I'm the villain because I'm fat. But now, Amelie has hubby Sean, who wants to live happily ever after with her. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I really want to look at special. Yeah? Tonight, they're celebrating their anniversary, and Amelie would like something special to wear. But finding something new isn't easy. As a teenager, my friends would never want to go shopping with me because I couldn't go into any other high street shop to find clothes because there would never be anything my size. But these days, Sean is there to help soften the blow. I have my bad days. I tell Sean we're very honest. Uh, he's been there always. He's been there through the worst. Weirdly, my first thought is it goes with our duvet. <laughs> it goes with our duvet, great. He does tell me I'm beautiful, but he also reminds me that he loves me. Ooh. Do they have my size? And this one. That one. I'll try it on. Sean's constant support is having a huge effect on Amélie. I started accepting that this is how my body is. <laughs> I can look in the mirror and I can say, I look, I look good today. I like what I see. Oh, that looks nice. Hey, I know you're not a fan of leopard print. No, it kind of suits you, though. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Who win? Okay. Woo! <laughs> Amélie is excited to wear her new outfit on their anniversary. I'm happy in my body, and I'm happy with who I am and how I look. And I don't want to fall into the pressure of having to lose weight to be accepted by everyone else. So do the couple have bigger plans for the future? Well, right now, we don't want any children. We are only 25 years old. Um, but maybe one day... Yeah, once we're financially yeah, ready, yeah. Maybe even one day we can have our own house with a garden. Um, and those ten dogs you promised me. Yeah, ten dogs. I don't remember that. I do. I remember two. Ten. Tank and Els are running a BDSM 101 for couples new to the lifestyle. We break down the tools, how they are used, how they are not used. Gentlemen, bend over. Don't ever hit anybody with something you haven't been hit with. That's a really good tip. Everybody gets to try all the stuff out. Ooh, hello. <laughs> Woo! This is a whole playground. <laughs> Meet 31-year-old Philip, who was born with a rare form of muscular dystrophy. Basically, I have really loose joints. I can't itch myself. I can't feed myself. I can't do anything, really. Growing up, Philip believed his future was bleak. The doctors had always told me, you're not going to live long. Against the odds, he proved his doctors wrong, but something was missing from his life. In 2016, I was 28, and that's around the age when I started to feel there was more to life than being single and being alone. Looking for love, Philip struck gold when he met his future wife, Susan. We came together by fate, and it was a, an absolute miracle. I said, very proud. He's my husband. I don't see wheelchair. <laughs> Philip worked for a disability support organisation, and their eyes met across the boardroom table when Susan applied for a job. And I was very nervous that it's my interview. I have to be very professional. She caught my eye. I thought not only was she very beautiful, but also very smart. We started texting and talking, and then we went on our first date, and the rest is history. He was very courageous, very passionate person, very outgoing, very socializing person. And on top of everything, he was so loving. And what are you doing there? What am I doing here? <laughs> Instructing you on how to cook. <laughs> Ah. You're my instructor. Yeah. And she that's why me, I'm stuck here. She calls me master chef, actually. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Yeah. OK, so we get the pan, a bit of oil. This is what I do to get the cooking angle. I raise myself up. Me and my husband, we connect very well. I'll say from day one, 
we connected. And when I say we connected, it clicked in because I didn't even have a second thought. We are a normal couple. We get up, we go out to dinner. You're handsome, you know that. The fundamental basis of our joy in life is that constant reminder of how much we love each other. We have a, a, a very healthy, functioning, intimate life, just like all married couples. He's a man, just like any other man. He carries all his responsibilities. He respects women. He understands them. He knows how to treat a woman. But what did her family think of their relationship? My parents, my dad, my mom were very supportive and so was my siblings. While Philip's mom loves her new daughter-in-law, other family and friends doubted she could truly love a man with muscular dystrophy. When we got engaged, one of my closest friends just had to make sure that I was mentally stable. And that shocked me. Somebody coming and asking me, Susan, are you okay? You must be very depressed. I'm like, I'm not depressed. I'm actually very happy. No, I think you're having some mental breakdown. But the worst was yet to come. After they shared wedding pictures on social media, the torrent of abuse began. The comments mainly were circled around, why would you marry a disabled man? But the cruelest ones, which I know upset my wife a lot, were the ones where they would say, she's only there for him to die and take everything from him. And there were numerous inferences of, you're gonna murder him after you've become a citizen and take his money, which is the cold hard thing to say. Sometimes you need to just mark it in their face. Yeah, you have to just put it right in front of them. Yeah, and just let them know it's wrong. Their perspective is totally wrong because that's degrading us, that's degrading me, that's degrading my husband. Complete strangers. Why would people try to get in between us with all these exactly. very mean, negative comments? Okay, well, let's just come. Come. Despite the haters, Philip and Susan are still going strong and currently have big plans for their relationship. The future for us definitely holds children. Definitely. Isn't that right, love? We've discussed that we would like about two or three. Uh, would be a good number eventually to have. I look at Susan every single day and I think to myself, I'm just so proud of my wife for being there for me every single day. Back in Kissimmee, it'll be 10 wax on the bum for the new love slave the other side of the pillow. that Els and Tank are auditioning. I love making other people happy. I love serving someone like higher than myself. And I just really want to do that with someone that I can fully trust. On your knees. They're hoping that Ray, who's new to the world of BDSM, is going to pass the test. So I'm going to teach you some positions that a submissive in our life should have. We're going to start with our standing positions first. First position we're going to learn is called attention. The reason I call it attention is because I need your ears always focused on a command from me or her. Chin should be up, chest out, back straight, looking straight ahead, no more looking at me. Next position is weight. And wait. And rest. Present self. Prepare to receive. There's your reception. <laughs> She's ready. <laughs> Well done. Well we got done. some good material here, we Daddy. Do. <laughs> so you got it? Yes. 
Sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You did. So she's gonna walk right here. You did good enough where we're gonna take you over to the other room and play with some nice little toys and see how you do there. Are you excited? Yes, goddess. All right, let's go. How will Ray respond when the pain as well as the pleasure levels increase? These are some of the items that we may use. I want emotion. I want to see your face. I want to feel your erotic energy. Okay? Yes, sir. Any questions? No, sir. Back in Kissimmee, Tank and Els are trying out a new submissive. Hands up here, oh. that one there. Open up. Although Ray is a newcomer to the BDSM world, she passed the obedience test, known as verbal bondage, with flying colors. But there's more to come. OK, we spoke about verbal bondage. So I am saying, Raz, of right now, do not move. So it's pretty much like position them in a way where, you know, put their hands somewhere and then just tell them, don't move and then we will play with them to see if they actually are able to keep that position without moving. And if something feels good, don't be afraid to say yes. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, goddess. goddess. Please, no. may I have more? Yes. Working with somebody new, the most challenging portion of it is it's overwhelming for them, so the most challenging is getting them to focus on each immediate task. Ray gets off to a good enough start, but then Elle spots her pushing her hair from her face without asking permission. Next time, when you have stuff on your face, you ask, God is may I touch it, God is may I fix it. Sir, can I move so I can fix my hair? <laughs> yes, goddess. But punishment only means more pleasure for a sub like Ray as Els breaks out her magic wand for some electro stimulation. So far, Ray's subby spirit has impressed Els and Tank, and now they want to see if she has what it takes for a second round. Checking in. Green is go. Yellow is pause. You're aware of all these? Where are you? Yellow for some water, please, sir. There you go. Good answer. So far, you have been doing amazing. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Do you think you have one more test in you on your ability to maintain your self-control and self-discipline? Do you think you can do that? Yes, sir. I've heard that before. Part of being a submissive means only having an orgasm when your master says so. Now, if you were going to do anything that involved any kinds of ah. orgasm, you know you're not allowed to without ah. asking, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Ray's taken a lot, so the pair decide it's time for a cool down. Staying on the cross. Take her back here behind you. you I got it. Yeah. You got the muscles. Turn I got around. heels. Turn around, honey. It's so good tonight. I'm so proud of you. When you come to an end, you have to provide what's called aftercare. You're Reassure them, you press your bodies against them, that you're grateful that they've allowed you to take them to that particular spot. It's so good tonight, I'm so proud of you. But how did Ray perform? She um, gave a lot of herself during the playtime. And then we could have some cuddles. There was definitely chemistry. She received um, both of our dominant energy and she returned her uh, submissive energy to us very well. Um, she was fun to play with. She kept me engaged, yeah. so that's that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Did you love it? Yes. It was like a new push for me, but I was so happy to like 
have like gotten there and did it and like after it was just like amazing like you really helped me come back like down to earth because I so wasn't even like you're like oh. Oh. <laughs> I just yeah. knew, like I was jello like I was just like oh my god it was amazing <laughs> everything was amazing and beautifully done and I had a lot of fun thank you thank you that was just so wild <laughs> I did not fully orgasm because I did not ask to and I didn't want to know what happened if I and I didn't get permission from them. She did great on day one um, and we will find out what she needs to work on the longer this process goes on. <laughs> so Kissimmee's king and queen of BDSM are on their way to grooming the perfect sub. And Ray is on her way to many more sessions of extreme love with Tank and Els.